All right, Super Bowl 55 is upon us on Sunday night. Tampa Bay in Kansas City. Kansas City is three and a half point home favorites. The over-under is set at 56. These numbers were when I checked them and shot this video on Friday. Kansas City can become the first team to repeat a Super Bowl champion since New England with Tom Brady did it in 2003 and 2004. This is the fourth Super Bowl in which both starting QBs are riding a seven plus game winning streak entering the game. Uh, the NFC and AFC are 27 and 27 straight up in the Super Bowl versus each other. You all, most people know the Steelers and Patriots lead the AFC with six rings apiece, while the Cowboys and 49ers both have five apiece on the NFC side. The favorite has gone 36 and 17 straight up and 29, 20 and 2 against spread in the Super Bowl. The AFC is 25, 27 and 2 against spread versus the NFC in Super Bowls. Kansas City beat San Fran last year 31, 20 covering the small one and a half point spread only six times in super bowl history has the favorite won without covering the number 2009 2005 2004 1996 1989 and 1976 there has only been a push twice in super bowl history 1997 and 2000 were the years that happened the over under is 27 and 26 in super bowl history so a lot of these numbers are split right down the right down the line and there was no over under in Super Bowl number one that's why there's one less on the total than there has been Super Bowls played the average total in Kansas City games this year is 52.2 and the average total in Bucks games this year is 52.9 so both of these numbers fall slightly under that 56 point total but this is the Super Bowl with two high powered offenses going up against each other the Bucks beat the Packers 31-26 while KC took care of the Bills 38-24 on their pass to the Super Bowl this Sunday. Brady and Mahomes are 2-2 two two head-to-head -head with KC outscoring Brady's teams 121 points to 120. So just more no numbers that are split down the line for you guys. Chris Godwin has six drops in the playoffs so far this year. The most by any player in a single postseason since they began tracking the stat in 2006. And I believe that was ESPN who started tracking that stat, but I could be wrong. So whatever. Tampa is 14-5 straight up in 11-8 against spread this season with the overhitting in 11 of their 19 games. Tampa is the first team to play the Super Bowl at home ever. Uh, the Bucks are 5-3 against spread at Raymond James Stadium this year. Brady is 6-3 straight up and 4-5 against spread in Super Bowls. Tampa is 7-0 straight up their last 7 overall, winning by an average of 13.7 points per game. The Bucks are 7-2-1 against spread their last 10 as home dogs. They're listed as the road team, but really, who are we kidding? Everybody knows that Tampa's the fucking home team in this game, even though Kansas City is listed as the home team on all the sheets. The Bucks are 3-12 and 1 against spread in their last 16 games at home after consecutive road games, which is the case in this one. Tampa is 1-6 straight up in their last 7 home games versus teams with winning records. The Bucks are 5-1 straight up and against spread versus the Chiefs. Tampa has scored at least 30 points in each of their last 6 games, averaging 35.7 points per game over that span. KC is averaging 25 points per game over that same span. On offense, the Bucks rank 2nd in scoring, 2nd in passing yards, 27th in rushing yards, 23rd in time on field, 16th in number of plays, and 7th in yards per play. On defense, Tampa is 9th in scoring, 21st in passing yards, 1st in rushing yards, 24th in time on field, 17th in number of plays, and 7th in yards per play. Kansas City's offense scores an average of 7.4 more points per game than the Bucks' defense surrenders, while Tampa's offense scores an average of 8.2 points more per game than the Chiefs' defense averages. Um, on offense, KC ranks 5th in scoring, 1st in passing yards, 16th in rushing yards, uh, 16th in time on field, 8th in number of plays, 2nd in yards per play. On defense, the, Chief, the Chiefs rank 10th in scoring, 13th in passing yards, 20th in rushing yards, 17th in time on field, 16th in number of plays, and 16th in yards per play. The Chiefs have allowed 24 points or less in four straight playoff games. That is the longest active streak. Kansas City is 16-2 straight up, 8-10 against spread this year with the over hitting in half of those 18 games. The Chiefs beat the Bucks 27-24 in Week 12. They were three and a half point favorites in that game as well. That's where I have the number set as of shooting this video. And if it weren't for a pair of, honestly, 
it weren't for a pair of late garbage time TDs in the fourth quarter, it was like 24-21, 24-10 or 27-10 or something, and Tampa got a couple late garbage time touchdowns, that game was not as close as that final score leads you to believe. Uh, Super Bowl faves of three or less are nine and six against spread. So watch that number. It could drop to three and it is sitting at three on a lot of sites. When I look, there's threes, three and a half, basically across the board. So watch out for that number. That is a bit of a key there. Bet 365 had the line KC three and a half. I know some sites had them as three point favorites. KC is two and eight against spread their last 10 games. The Chiefs are eight and zero straight up. It, on the road this year and four and four against the spread if you like the chiefs to win you might want to put a couple bucks on Mahomes to repeat as super bowl mvp because if they win well we all know that the award usually goes to the quarterback no matter what that's just the way the voting has gone how is Mahomes feeling with that turf toe injury that he suffered a couple weeks ago he has had time to heal um, Mahomes has never lost a game by more than one possession in his 53 career starts. The longest such streak since 1950, including the playoffs. Mahomes led the league in QBR against the Blitz with a 96.8 rating. The Bucks' whole defensive identity is about the Blitz. They blitzed on 38% of drop bats. Do they change their identity or do they play into Mahomes' strengths? Uh, that's a real hard call for Todd Bowles. I think that's going to be a huge key to this game. Todd Bowles is a genius at dialing up defenses, a genius at dialing up blitzes. Uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, uh, Shaq Barrett off the edge. Those two guys are going to be huge for Tampa Bay to have a chance and to get pressure without maybe having to send so many blitzes uh, against Mahomes and leave one-on-one -on -one situations with Kelsey Hill uh, McCole Hardman, uh, you name it. The list goes on and on of offensive weapons. And I didn't even name Charles Edwards Hilaire or Bell out of the backfield that they got. They got Williams. They uh, And a shitload of fucking offensive weapons. So I don't know that blitzing will be a good thing for Tampa. But I also believe that you got to play to your strengths. And you got to do what your team does best. And force the other team to adjust to you. So it's a real tough call. It'll be very interesting and a very huge key to the game, I think. How Todd Bowles is able to manage Patrick Mahomes and contain that Chiefs offense. Uh, Brady ranked 30th in QBR against the Blitz this season. And he hasn't ranked much better on quick throws this year either. Tampa's O-line will have to give him time for that vertical route to develop. Because Tampa Bay seems to have a purely vertical offense. Um... That, that'll be interesting. Two interesting things in this game for me to watch out for that could decide the outcome. Kansas City is 10-0 straight up on the road their last 10 overall. 7-0 straight up versus the NFC and 25-2 straight up in their last 27 overall. I know they're technically the home team, but again, they are playing on the road. That's why I'll list a lot of these stats with Tampa as a home team and KC as the road team, even though I know it says technically Kansas City's at home. Mahomes has a career 21 and 4 straight up record on the road. Mahomes has 47 40 passing yards on the year with a 66.3 completion percentage through 38 TDs to 6 interceptions. He's also ran for 302 yards and another pair of touchdowns. Brady had 4,633 passing yards with a 65.7 completion percentage with 40 TDs and 12 interceptions. Uh, it, it's going to be very interesting to see which quarterback comes up because all these numbers are pretty much dead nuts down the middle when I'm comparing these two teams. The two quarterbacks head to head. Everything is very comparable. There will be a few key notes for me personally, but you guys got to make your own choice with the stats I give you. Tampa scored 41 points off turn turnovers this postseason, tied for third most all time. That's 45% of their total points. These playoffs have come on the other teams turning the ball over. KC has turned the ball over once this postseason, and we're tied for fourth fewest in the NFL during the regular season with only 16. Andy Reid became the first coach in NFL history to have led two different franchises to three straight conference title games, three in a row with KC this year now after they beat Buffalo, and with the Eagles from 2001 to 2003. Andy Reid has 11 division titles and 22 years of coaching, and more total wins than Vince Lombardi and John Madden combined. Reed has 17 career playoff wins tied for fourth all-time with Joe Gibbs, 
Uh, Don Shula has 19, Tom Landry 20, and Belichick 31. They're the only coaches with more career playoff wins than Andy Reid. Andy Reid, as some of you might know, his son Britt, the coordinator for the Chiefs. He got in a car accident. His family's a little hurt. So allegedly, there was alcohol and maybe some medication involved. I don't know the story, so I'm not going to speculate too much. But those are some of the reports that you hear out there. I don't know what truth is in there and what isn't. Um, Andy Reid has a 26-5 and career straight-up record coming off a of bye week. He's won seven straight games, such games. Well, Mahomes, he's a perfect 7-0 and in his career coming off the bye week. The key for me when it comes to Kansas City, a huge part for Kansas City for me was when they didn't panic against the Browns when Mahomes went out under uh, concussion protocol. Uh, Chad Henney stepped in and didn't miss a beat. They stepped, they, he stepped in. They kept playing their game. They even went for it with a fourth and one or, or whatever it was from almost midfield. And, and just with pure confidence, uh, then the turf toll with Mahomes last, last game against Buffalo, they looked to purely dominate them. I think that just proved to me mentally that Kansas City is in the right spot. They're one of the best coaches of all time leading the way. And Travis Kelsey set a record for receiving yards by a tight end this season with 1,416. Kansas City has fallen behind at least nine by at least nine points in four of their last five playoff games, and they've won them all. Anyways, Brady will pass for around 300 yards and a pair of TDs and a pair of interceptions, in my opinion. Mahomes, he'll throw for around 375, 400 yards. He'll get three or four TDs, and he might even run one in himself. Tampa only beat a pair of teams that finished the year with winning records. The Saints, who had a minus four turnover differential in their divisional round game, and the Packers, the Packers... Turned the ball over not only to the Patriots and the Patriots scored points, but New England turned the ball over three times to Green Bay and Green Bay didn't even get a single fucking point off any of those three turnovers. That's just mind-boggling when you have players like Aaron Rodgers on the opposite side of the field. He couldn't get a single point generated off of three New England turnovers that could come back to bite New England against Kansas City in the Super Bowl. It, ball security, Brady's three INTs, like I said, the three turnovers against Green Bay, they were all interceptions by Brady. Um, Brady has yet to lead his team to a first quarter touchdown in any of his nine previous Super Bowl games. I think they've totaled three points, three total first quarter points out of nine first quarters. Three points he's generated in the nine Super Bowls. Time of possession is a big factor. Did he start with the ball, etc., etc.? I know that can be a very misleading stat. Um, Brady led the NFL this year of passes of 20 yards or greater, completing 38 of those such passes, but he also led the NFL with nine interceptions in such passes. Kansas City's defense led the NFL with eight interceptions on passes of 20 plus yards, one of the best deep ball defenses in the league, holding opposing QBs to a QB rating of just 63.6% on passes of 20 yards or greater. The NFL average QBR on those such passes, so you know, 94.9. So that's how much better a job Kansas City secondary is than what people might realize. Updates coming up on my laptop here while I'm trying to do this, and it just X'd right out of it. So give me a second, and we'll be back in there. There we go. All right, in all of Brady's Super Bowl losses, there is one consistent theme. He got beat up for four quarters, pressured all game. Steve Pe Spagnola was the Giants defensive coordinator in 2007 when the Giants beat the undefeated Patriots 17-14 in the Super Bowl. Spagnola has a 9-2 career record as a defensive coordinator in the playoffs and is 5-0 with Kansas City as their coordinator. Brady is 4-1 straight up in his career, including playoffs versus reigning Super Bowl champions. Guess who his only loss is to? Kansas City in Week 12 this season to Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes is 24-1 straight up in his last 25 games, including the playoffs. The most wins in a 25-game span by any QB in NFL history entering a Super Bowl game. Since 2018, when under pressure, Mahomes ranks first in PFF grade, 77.9, first in big-time throws with 58, and second in TDs with 30. Kansas City is a league-best 44-11 over the past three years. 
I'd love Kansas City to win this game. I think if Tampa is lucky and things break well and they can pressure with JPP and Shaq Barrett on defense or Todd Bowles being the genius he is, should have been the fucking Eagles head coach. Should have got the fucking interview. Should have got the fucking job. That's another topic for a rant day, a rant video soon. But I like Kansas City to win this 35-21, 42-28. 42-21. I think this game is an, at, at least a 10 to 14 point cover for the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think it's because of the fact that Tampa hasn't won. I, it's so hard to say against Tom Brady because he is so great. But I just don't think he has... I, I don't think they have the ability to slow down Kansas City enough. And Tampa could win in a shootout, but I don't like their chances to do that with the interceptions that Brady has thrown, especially on the deep balls this year. That's my Super Bowl picks. Everybody enjoy the game. Peace.